are about to see the eighth episode of 10 episode a podcast. We're called In Brief. It's the story about how we started our uh, boxer short co uh, company, Buford Lee. You can purchase boxer shorts from us at BufordLee.com. During the early days of the pandemic, my friend Arjun and I realized that this was a great time to get in on e-commerce because a lot of folks were buying online. A lot of folks who never bought online before were starting to make their purchases online. And we knew that people were wanting to, um, they were working from home and they needed some comfortable clothes. So they were using uh, whatever they had. And we thought we'd add to that with boxer shorts with pockets, modest shorts that you can wear around your family, your roommates, whoever you live with, and pockets. So you can tuck in your phone, your chapstick, your keys, whatever you need to, to take from room to room. And now uh, we're finally are uh, starting our, opening our store and actually selling online. But we know that a lot of other people are wanting to do things like what we're doing. So we decided to make these 10 um, episodes, they're 10 to 20 minutes each, and post them on LinkedIn and uh, maybe a few other spots and let people know what we learned kind of in real time along the way. So if you want to sell something online, if you want to start an e-commerce business from scratch, maybe what we learned will help you out a little bit. In this particular uh, episode of, of our podcast, I talk with my friends uh, Carson Lester and Pete Lester about how they sell uh, food products online because there are extra rules and regulations around food. And if you're thinking of selling chow chow or sauerkraut or um, uh, you know, they sell pickles or if you want to sell jams or jellies or something like that online, you need to know a few uh, specific things that we don't cover in the rest of our show. So uh, this is what we did this time and hope you'll enjoy it and find value in it. And uh, check us out again at BufordLee.com if you or your boyfriend or your part husband, partner, brother, father, son uh, might want some uh, boxer shorts with pockets. Thanks. started my business um, in, on October 7th, 2018. Um, and the business started as a school project for FFA. And... At, at first, I, I, before the, I, I had the original idea for like starting a greenhouse and wanting to sell plants, and then later I decided to choose pickles because um, it's just pickles is one of my favorite foods. So um, we started out um, making about a few tin jars and then um, sold them and then people um, wanted more so that's when I decided to turn it into a business actual business I have been buying pickles from you for what two years <laughs> seems like that and I've got a jar and a half in the in the refrigerator and I've taken the last jar that I ate up and I now use it for a water glass. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the pickles are fantastic. So specific to selling food online, what does somebody who has never sold food online before, but they just know that their recipe for something could sell? What do they need to know? Go tell them that, that your um, I think Carson said more than once that he's got a unique product mm -hmm. um, and that uh, got good flavor in it. I think that once he, he that you believe that you could sell it in a local store that people internationally or uh, regional or a I think he sold it about 37 states so far, London and South Africa, but um, I think he's got something that people like across the board. Right. Uh, and uh, to start out, uh, what makes your, what, tell them what flavors you got and what, uh, what, you, what you can ship, because One of our... Um most popular flavors and I'll, I'll get to the rest of the pickles but one of our most popular flavors is sweet heat kosher spicy 
Um, and then the rest are um, bread and butter, sweet deal, um, sour. Yeah. Sure. This this is uh, bread and bud, or this is um, one that we made. That, and he, on the back of each jar is a number, and that um, says um, how much we've made. So this one is 8,162. So you've made 8,162 jars of pickles, or 8,162 jars of that specific flavor? Um, total. Total. 8,162 jars of pickles. In how many years? Um, two years. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of pickles. <laughs> That's a lot of pickles. They're really good, too. They're really good. <laughs> so, you started this off as a class project, and then it became a business. What changed when it moved from a class project to a real life business? What were some of the things you guys had to do? Um, when I turned it into um, an actual business, I had to create a website um, for people that, um, if they're not local in Idaho County, um, people that's like um, live in different states or in different counties in North Carolina um, can go to the website and purchase because we currently um, sell them at local stores and we're about to go into another store we're about to go into Food Lion soon Oh, wow. <clears throat> just in North Carolina? Um, or, yes. Yeah. Just in North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. I was, there's a food line across the street from me. I was just over there a few minutes ago. I didn't know if I was going to see the pickles in there or not, but maybe next year. <laughs> so um, before we started recording, you just mentioned something about USDA. I think that's of interest to anybody who wants to sell products online. I know years ago, uh, my mother used to live with a woman who, in during the Great Depression, she made money by making jams, canning it, putting it in her kid's wagon, and her kid would drag it door to door and sell the jam. And eventually, she, her business grew large enough, she sold out to the Bama Jam Company. Um, but you can't do that anymore, right? <laughs> You can't just like make stuff and take it door to door and sell it and not come under some kind of scrutiny because now there's so much more interest in keeping our food supply safe. So what do, we, what do you have to do? Uh, one requirement I think to send off to Raleigh each flavor and they give you, um, they actually come out and inspect your kitchen or commercial kitchen, home kitchen, cannery type and spend the day with you basically and get you approved and once they get stamped off on that then um, and they approve your products th then actually you can you can start as a as an official uh, cannery in north carolina well carson tell them about not every food you can make at home um not not every um food can be made um, but one one product um, that I know that the state of North Carolina um, doesn't allow to be made in homes is um, bottling water and um, carbonated beverages. Okay, so you cannot bottle water or carbonated beverages in a home and sell them right. in North Carolina. Wow. What about moonshine? Can you do that in North Carolina? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> We're not telling. <laughs> We're not telling uh, well, secrets. Wow. <laughs> what about shipping? I mean, 
this is not cheap or easy to ship like a pair of boxer shorts is. How does what what are the what do you have to know about shipping glass containers and heavy stuff and food products that can maybe break or spoil or something? Uh, we use um, we use bubble wrap to wrap the jars, and then we get our boxes from the United States Postal Service. Okay. So you just wrap them in bubble wrap tape them, put them, nest them in a plain USPS box, put the address label on there, ship it. Yes. Okay. Do you ship internationally or just in the U.S.? Um, we've shipped um, outside the U.S. before. We've shipped to England and South Africa. Okay. And once you're approved to ship or once you're approved to sell in North Carolina, you can ship your product to any other state. You don't have to be approved in every single state you ship to. Right. Mm. right. Okay. So once you're approved in one state, that's good for all 50. Yes. Hang on. The U.S. Drug and Food Administration nationwide. Okay. So you're approved USDA, but when you said you send something to Raleigh, that's just where the USDA office is. It's not that there's a state agency. It's a federal agency. Yeah, you have to be cleared by your state, which is both of the state and the government. Both. Okay. Okay. So both the state government and the federal government. And one thing we came across in shipping, of course, you're dealing with glass and food. And we've had less than uh, hundreds and hundreds of shipments go out. Probably less than a handful of the mason jars have come up with some type of, uh, by the time they reach the, the customer, that there's some type of uh, maybe a broken jar or something happened in transit. Uh, that's mm -hmm. uh, only four or five probably jars or that we've had issues with out of the hundreds that Carson shipped out. It just the bubble wrap and the box, the sturdy boxes work. And I think there's a temperature difference. Sometimes they store this stuff overnight in a uh, in, in uh, a vehicle, and it gets too hot, maybe, or or mishandling um, <laughs> at the, the uh, at the end of the shipment once it leaves and by truck or airplane or however it goes and then uh, it can it can be mishandled and, and fragile so that, that could happen too and the brand of jar too one time we had yeah there's a different uh, brands of jars that we use there was one particular brand that didn't work uh, as well as the other brands so that we uh, kind of had to go with the, the brand that worked for us the most. And I think people, uh, once they get into different types of cannery or food products, they'll find different packaging and elevations, uh, you know, maybe going out to Colorado or higher elevations will have a different effect on the products. Hmm. But, yeah, but then you'll find out which one... Uh, that your line item is and which batch it came from and which shipment day and you can pinpoint which jar it was and and uh, kind of know which shipment it came from tracking okay all right anything else people need to know if they're going to ship food products sell food products source food products and stay out of trouble with the law yeah. well i uh, think that uh one, once you um, go through the right channels, it can work out uh, for for you, you know. And and uh, it, you know we do lots of deliveries too within uh, Iredell County in North Carolina, so we do door to door and have a lot of host of events that just through the e-commerce. Uh, Carson's got the website at tastypicklesbycarson.com and people can go on that website, place their orders, and then we can uh, 
meet them at an event or we can depend on where they're at and then ship it right out to them. So it's tasty pickles by Carson.com. Yes. By Carson.com. Okay. And that's the best way to get in touch with you. That's, that's where the people can buy pickles. That's where people can see how you built your business. That's it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Yeah. And appreciate Carson and Pete Lester uh, sharing this with us on our 10 episode uh, mini series on how to start your own e commerce business from scratch. Uh, next time, I think we're going to be talking about uh, why you should build an international team for your company. Thanks for watching. Uh-huh.